Feet inside the cowling. I've now put just this green tape so that I know where to slide. The carbon fiber overlap is going here and I'll slide it up right till it touches the green tape and then I'll bag it in that position. This leaves me an extra quarter that after I take it all apart, I can trim it down a quarter inch and sand it and that'll give me a full one inch overlap for the screw joint. So what I'm doing now is I'm basting it I blew it out with an air nozzle really up close and tight. I alcoholed it, then I blew it out again. Now I'm basting it, it's just rubbing in a layer to make sure you've really got it inside all the pores. And then, uh, then we'll lay the part up on it and we will know that there's no pores that aren't filled. All right, so this is six layers of carbon fiber right here on a piece of plastic. I can just run this down. I have to trim it around my air box. Um, I've now got six layers on. I've got the tape release, the green tape that lets me know where I need it to be to as a minimum. I've got the peel ply on. I've squeegeed out all the resin I can. Now I need to put a foam pad over it and then I'll duct tape the bag over top of this. and. I've made this mistake before. You have to make sure you duct tape the cut line on the back side. Otherwise it sucks air through and then it puts a little air gap right around the joints of the two halves. So I got to tape off the lines where I cut it so I don't draw air through it. And uh, then I can take this off and bag it. I'll bag both sides at the same time. I got a splitter. I'll put uh, two vacuums, one on this side, one on that side. Uh, and then I'm going to drape a big tarp over the whole thing and, and uh, put some heat in it and we'll make it an oven. All right. Well, I've just pulled off all the bag and the peel ply. See the carbon fiber, the top edge I'm going to trim. It turned out really good. You can see. Nice and smooth. Boy, that worked perfect. Got a great blend. Let's cut it apart. Pop the two halves. See, we trimmed it up. I've got my step here. I got a great big six layer overlap. So I have nut plates in and put my cowling top on. So let's get back to work. And then I made these boxes and you can see that they curve. They're on here so I have an indication of I can't go out any further than this, but this box will probably be cut down here somewhere and it'll blend into a big round tube. But. That's the box, and if you look at the end, it's got a double groove. It's a tongue and groove slot. This is the groove. This would be the tongue. That's that side. That's that side. You can see the tongue and groove slot. That locks in. Good day, I just got the exhaust pipes on. Always trimming. <laughs> trimming around these pipes makes me nervous, because if you screw it up, it sucks to try and scarf in a few more layers of carbon to put it back, but I got it done. All right, so this is probably the most complex cowling I've ever done. This is my no lower cowling. I've mixed a lot of things into it, but what I like the most is this pressurized filter box. The air comes in the very, very front in a traditional inlet. This tinfoil thing is actually a light. I've got it covered up to paint. The air comes in here. Now what I did normally on a turbine crop duster. The ducting comes in and they try and get the filters in a separate filter box, a pressure box. So they actually run a duct all the way around. Oftentimes it's behind the engine and it's put in a metal box with two filters in it. There's a few problems with that. There's over 200 parts to get all the way back there. Lots of nuts, bolts, pieces. Also the air velocity has to stay really fast trying to get around all these corners. So I decided to do something different. I've never seen it. I decided to take and put the filters inside the cowling itself. That way I could share this outside wall that's already exists, build a separate pressurized box. And right here, I've got five air filters. And what that does is the air comes in the front of the engine. It widens instantly. It naturally happens with the cowling and that slows the air way down. So now the velocity of the air is less than half the speed, which helps it go through the filters. I put in five filters instead of two. 
They pass through these filters. There's a lid that closes this out. And then I have big ramp ducting that comes up the side and dumps directly into the turbine. So I have very little ducting. I have almost no parts. Airtight, completely sealed system. So I'm really excited about this pressure plenum. It was a ton of work, but it's done. Fresh air NACAs, hot and cold NACA. And here's the ducting plate for my oil cooler. This pairs directly to the oil cooler bracket. Uh, I don't even have to bolt it together. When the cowling goes on, the air goes directly to the oil cooler. So this right here was a lot of fun too. As these ramped up, I needed to get from here into the engine and the engine needs to be able to move with an isolator. So I made just two parts is all I need to go from a totally sealed air box filter system into the engine. The way I did that is I made these really wild looking custom parts. The way this goes in is simply this. This part locks right here. I made it tongue and groove. I got a tongue and groove base in it. I've got embedded aluminum for the nut plates. You can see that just goes in, locks into place. Then from this point, you can see I've got the round inlets that matches that giant pressure plenum I showed in an earlier video. And right here is a big rubber boot that ties this to the engine so the engine can move. It was a lot of work, little details that really take time. I needed all the air I could, but the motor mount passed right through here, right alongside the air ducted into the oil cooler. I got lots of clearance on everything. It worked perfect. And I mean, I got good clearance, but it was a tight fit, but I couldn't be happier. So let's get back to work. All right, <laughs> I'm really excited. As always, Draco's coming along fast. I've got the cowling officially totally done, split. Now I'm ready to go. I've got lots of various NACAs on here. This NACA is for the oil cooler. It's a lot deeper, longer, wider, and then this fin is to direct the air that's turning as it comes around. It will hit the side of this and direct the air in here. Any air that skips over the top loops back underneath and goes in the second side. This really works well on oil coolers, so that's my oil cooler. This NACA on this side actually is two two-inch hoses. If you were to look inside there, there's two hoses. The reason I did that, and I learned it on a past aircraft I did, one hose is going to a heater. The other hose is a fresh air to a blender box. And if I use two separate NACAs, I have two different pressures. No matter where you put your NACAs, there's different airflow. So what I learned is on one of my aircraft, I had to turn the dial that moved hot to cold all the way to one side to get any heat. And if you moved it a little bit, it got really cold and it wasn't very even. One air was higher pressure than the other. So the way I did this is I put a deep hole in here. It creates a pressure zone and then it has two two inch ducts coming off it so that those tubes both have equal pressure to flow to a mixing valve. One's heat, one's cool. So that's why that NACA's done that way and it's so large. Then these are two traditional vent NACAs, fresh air vents. Normally you used to see the NACAs way back here further. You can't on a turbine. Usually the exhaust pipes are clear at the firewall pointing backwards out of a piston engine. On the turbine, the pipe's up front. So all the NACAs have to be in front of the exhaust pipes. Otherwise you get all that turbine smell in. So that's why these NACAs are so far forward. So the top cowling's done. Really nothing about that. I got a simple quick latch door I made. Got it installed. My gear lake fairings are in. And over there I got my gear lake fuel tanks all painted up. 